Hey you, and welcome. My name's Mike, and in this old video, uh, we're going to New Zealand, which, uh, is actually for, for the first time, so, um... Boom, boom. Yahoo! That's pretty cool. I mean, aside from, uh, the story I'm about to tell. This is a story which took place in 2018 in the city of Auckland. Grace Mullane was a backpacker all the way from England, who was planning on spending a couple of weeks traveling, chilling with the Kiwis. While she was there, she went on the Tinder. The Tinder. And well, that's that's where our story begins, uh, which it will do right now. Right now. So, like Grace, we will start off in the United Kingdom before traveling all the way um, down under. Let's begin in Brentwood, a town in Essex, don't you know? I didn't. Grace Emmy Rose Mullane was born in December 1996 to parents Gillian and David. She was the youngest of three with two older brothers. Music? Grace was a fan. Hockey? Yes, sir, -y, Bob. Grace was, you know, the outgoing, gregarious gregarious type of person. I mean, the type you'd want to be to, uh, you know, backpack across the Southern Hemisphere. After she finished up her schooling days, she attended the University of Lincoln, enrolling in advertising and marketing, and getting it. The degree was in the bag, September 2018. She, you know, long dreamed of traveling the world after finishing and getting up her degree, you know, before she had to, you know, get the job, get the mortgage, the everyday grind. She was taking a gap year. She wanted to experience, and she made it happen. It was to South America she would go, leaving her home for the last time on October 26th, 2018. From Heathrow Airport, she boarded a plane bound for Peru. Traveling around there, hanging with the llamas. <laughs> They're class. After spending a few weeks there, experiencing what it has to offer and meeting other travelers from across the globe, she then left for Aotearoa, Butchered that, no doubt, on November 19th. From there, she spent the next 10 days traveling the North Island, visiting such sites as Cape Reinga and the Bay of Islands, seeing what honestly looks like, you know, the, the most beautiful country in the world has to offer the North Island of it anyway. And I mean, come on, you know, if the greatest trilogy ever made didn't sell you on it, I don't know what will. Do you think New Zealanders like hate Lord of the Rings? Because it kind of gets brought up all the time when you talk about New Zealand. Let me know in the comments. It was on November 30th that Grace arrived in Auckland, the biggest city in New Zealand. Grace was 22 years old. Her birthday was on December the 2nd, but she wouldn't make it. In Auckland, Grace was staying at a hostel, the base backpackers, right? And, and while she was there, she got on, clicked download on the old Tinder. And then she disappeared. See, the last time she was seen, heard from, was from, was her roommates on the 1st of December. Uh, that was kind of it. The next day, it was a Sunday, December 2nd, it was her birthday, her family, friends were happy birthday, all that sort of crack, and then when she wasn't responding, well, you know, the silence was deafening. That's when the family started to become concerned, they gave it another couple of days, and on the 5th, of December, they reported Grace Mullane missing to the Auckland uh, police. She hadn't updated any of her social media profiles. Her family hadn't spoken to her since she arrived in New Zealand, and she had two phones that both went straight to voicemail. When she was in Peru, she'd been part of a group. In Auckland, she was going solo. But we begin tonight with a public appeal for missing British backpacker Grace Mullane. A short time ago, police held a press conference to appeal for sightings of the 22-year-old who has not been seen since 7.15pm on Saturday night. She was last seen on the 1st of December, that was Saturday. Grace's dad, David, promptly flew out to New Zealand to try and find her. I would like to take this opportunity to appeal to anybody who has seen, spoken to, or come into contact with Grace over the last few days, and to come forward 
with any detail, no matter how many, how small, then contact the investigation team. Once again, I thank you all for coming. And so, you know, the police having a goo around the place, that's what led them to this. The police investigation today has concentrated around her movements and activities in Auckland since she's arrived in New Zealand. A large part of that focus has been around CCTV footage throughout Auckland. This being CCTV, right? So the hostel said, you know, she never returned when she went out that, that evening of December the 1st, right? And the CCTV showed she never came back that night. So instead, Auckland is actually really, they got CCTV everywhere, it seems. So where did she go? They could fairly straightforwardly track her movements the night she disappeared and who she went and met with. She left the hostel at 5.37 p.m. That's Grace with the white shoes. From there, she walked to Sky City, just around the corner. Sky City is like, um, it's like a casino kind of type thing. We can go there for a few scoops if you want. And it was there, just outside Sky City, at 5.45 p.m. that she got a big ol' hug from Mr. Blue Shirt. That was her date for the night. It met on Tinder. They went into Sky City, had a few drinks for about an hour and a half, before heading off to Mexican Cafe, a Mexican Cafe, which was just around the corner. There, a few more scoops, drop a tequila, then they continued their bar hopping, going to the Blue Stone Room, again, just around the corner. There, they had a few snugs. When this fella left to go to the bathroom, Grace picked up her phone and texted a friend back in England, saying that she clicked with this guy Rio. well. They left together at 9.40, walking arm in arm. Where they went to was this guy's apartment at City Life Hotel. And that was it. It didn't take long for the police to track down this bozo. His name is Jesse Kempson, 26 years old at the time, a native Wellingtonian, Wellington guy, Welly, native Welly. Now Jesse, Jesse, he was a fierce fellow for the, he would hole you with lies, right? He had, he had terminal cancer. His parents were dead. He was adopted by very rich people. He was a CIA agent. His cousin played for the All Blacks. He would come up with whatever shit he felt he needed to come up with to make himself not seem like the loser he was. He would not just invent shit, like, why not? The reality of Jesse Kempson is much more mundane. He was born in Wellington in 1992. His parents separated when he was nine, and his mother left the country. He worked as a laborer and bartender, and the bullshitting he was fierce for wasn't only for strangers. It was for his family too, who eventually gave him the boot because of that. He then moved to Australia for three years. What Jesse did when he returned to New Zealand isn't uh, ex entirely clear, but his last job was working in phone sales, right? Where And he would get fired the day he met Grace for, guess what, lying. But he did post this on Facebook, apologizing to his family and friends for, uh, well, being a shit. <sighs> Wait till you hear this. My clear arrogance and selfishness has truly affected the relationship I have with people in my personal life. How's that for an accent? Come on! Never again. When we grow up, we make mistakes. That's how we improve. In the exam of life, oh Jesus, you can't retest yourself with the same question paper. But with that being said, we can change how we treat each other, and over time I've learned that every action has a reaction. Putting all of that aside, I just want anyone who I've hurt slash let down to know I'm truly sorry from the bottom of my heart. So essentially, he posted on Facebook saying, here listen, I know I've been a bit of a dickhead, 
Sorry about that. He would then go on to do something worse than he ever had done before. So your apology was another fucking lie. But at the time, you know, when he was asked by the police, where is Grace? Last we saw, she was in your apartment building. With you! Pfft. No idea what happened to her. Did he hurt her? <laughs> no way, Jose. When interviewed on the 5th of December, he did nothing. How did the evening pan out? Um... Mm, yeah, pretty good. I didn't initially know that she was real. What do you mean? Well, there's a lot of... So, have you heard of catfish? No. So, catfishing is where someone uses your profile, or uses your photos and pretends to be you and then meets... And you're a completely different person. Right. Um, and it's happened to a few people I know in Australia. Um, and it's all over... It's all over the TV... So I thought, you know, if I meet at Sky City, at least I know that there's lots of people around. So if it is someone that it's not, um, then I can just walk away. How did the evening sort of come to an end? Uh, there was a hug and a kiss on the cheek um, and a thanks, no, nice meeting you. Um, and then I said, let me know about tomorrow. Um, and she said, okay. And then she kept walking. So Grace was never seen leaving his apartment, but he sure was, quite a few times. What did he do, I wonder, after Grace entered his apartment? Well, it's pretty unsurprising if you're a killer. The next morning, that's on the 2nd of December, he went down and bought a suitcase. Then he went and bought cleaning supplies. After they were both back in his apartment, he got a taxi to a car rental place. Then, at about 4pm, he went on another Tinder date. Had a few subs with this lady. She wasn't a fan uh, of him. She got creeps. No luck there, Jesse. Sorry. She was so uncomfortable, in fact, that when she realised she would have to walk with him to where her car was parked, she just uh, made up her, oh, my car's parked elsewhere. Yeah, sorry. This was probably because during that date, Jesse was yapping away with her about a few things. One of those things he told her was that his friends were cops and they were searching for a body in the Waitakere Mountains, which are just outside Auckland. And he also told her, hey, fun fact, you know, did you know that police dogs, they can't, um, you find the scent of a, of a body if the body is buried more than four feet. After the womp womp failed date, Jesse borrowed a rogue doctor carpet cleaning machine. Then he loaded two suitcases onto a hotel trolley and put them in the rented car. The next morning, before 7am, he went off and bought a shovel. And then he drove off. He returned to his apartment at 9.30, went to the dry cleaners, dumped rubbish bags, and washed the car. We next see him on the 5th of December, dumping more items. And it was that day the police caught up with him. We actually don't know if she's been murdered or not yet. She may be alive and well. Okay. But she might also be dead. Okay. Okay? And it could be that you've done it. Hey, I just want to ask a question. Have I been arrested for something I didn't do? You haven't been arrested, Oh. No. Oh. Oh. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Holy shit. Okay. After that interview on the 5th, the police chucked him out of his apartment and investigated it using luminol. There, they discovered the presence of blood on the carpets. Jesse was interviewed again on the 7th of December. This time, he had another story. You've indicated that you're willing to 
speak to us about the events of last Saturday. Is that correct? Yes. Tell me what happened last Saturday. Um, from the beginning. Yeah. He said that when, you know, they went back to his place at City Life, him and Grace started getting into it. And she asked him if he liked bondage. She started talking to me about uh, Fifty Shades of Grey, which is a, a, a sex fantasy um, movie that's out. We started having sex. At first it was um, it was just normal. Um, it was very placid. Um, and then she uh, asked me if we could get into uh, bondage. He said, never tried it before, you know, here, I'm a pretty innocent guy, you know. He told the police that Grace, she asked him to choke her. Uh, they took some pictures of each other. And then he went and had a shower and he fell asleep, you know, under the running water. As you do, you know. And then all I remember is falling asleep in the shower. Then, when he awoke the next morning, he found Grace lying dead on the floor. I, I need, I need to stop. I need to go. Would you like some fresh air? Yeah, please. I, I was in shock. Um, I didn't know what to do. Uh, um, I went downstairs and I was just, I don't know, I was all over the place. Um, I didn't believe what had happened. I was just terrified and scared. I, I thought that she had gone. I, I thought she had left. Pathologist, the specialist doctor, will perform a post mortem. Yeah. They're very skilled yeah. at establishing people's causes of death. Yeah. Do you understand that? Yeah. Did you kill Grace Mullane? No. Okay. You're under arrest for the murder of Grace Mullane on or about the 2nd of December. Okay. You understand? Yeah. Okay. He panicked and, well, you know the rest from the CCTV. Weird though that he says he was panicked because uh, he looks cool as a cucumber in the video. He said he buried her in the bush. This is like the story of Christopher uh, Garnier, you know, like all over again, where, you know, he blames the victim. She asked me to do it, you know. She asked you to do what, kill her? Because I mean, they searched his phone records and his phone, uh, search history and all that, and they found different to what he was saying. At half 1 a.m., so we can assume this is after she was killed, he searched for the Waitakere Ranges. You know, he was looking for a, hmm, I don't think she'd be found there. He also googled hottest fire. After that, he took pictures of what appeared to be her body, followed by looking at porn. Over the next couple of days, he googled her name multiple times to see what was in the news about her. Grace's body was found on the 8th of December, after spotting what looked like freshly dug soil and broken branches just off the road. This was confirmed when Jessie led them there. She had been buried for six days by this point. Her body had... He had essentially forced her body into a suitcase after she had been strangled to death. Bruises were found on her shoulders and arms like she had been restrained. So, she lay there in his apartment all night, the next morning, as he went out, got the suitcases, got the cleaning supplies. She lay in his apartment while he went on another Tinder date. Then he covertly smuggled her out of the building into the rental car, buried her, and then tried to clean up. Today I would like to start um, with a comment uh, on the murder of uh, Grace Milan, having received a number of media queries about this tragedy. 
Uh, firstly, I cannot imagine the grief of her family and what they will be experiencing and feeling right now. And my thoughts and prayers are with her father, David, um, who is in the country, um, her mother, Gillian, who cannot be here, uh, and her wider family, friends uh, and loved ones. You know, from uh, the Kiwis I have spoken to, there is this overwhelming sense of hurt and shame that this has happened in our country, a place that prides itself on our hospitality, on our manaakitanga, um, especially to those who are visiting our shores. And so, on behalf of New Zealand, I want to apologise to Grace's family. Your daughter should have been safe here, and she wasn't, and I'm sorry for that. I've advised the family through the police that if there is anything we can do to assist, we are here to help with that. Jesse pled not guilty. The defense would go with what you know they will go with. It was it was a tragic, you know, accident. Grace, you know, she was into she was into bondage, you know, she asked him to choke her and it went horribly wrong. They would say, you know, Jesse panicked, you know, he didn't know what to do. He messed up, but he's the real victim here. Come on. Yeah. For someone who panicked, he had a pretty uh, unpanicky reaction to her death. He could have, you know, called the emergency services, told them it was an accident, but he didn't. Instead, he, you know, slapped a ham. During the trial, three women came forward, telling of their experiences of meeting Jesse on Tinder. He did indeed like the rough stuff, and that's also where a lot of those lies were first heard. He would bullshit them all, and he would assault them too. He would in fact be accused of sexual assault a number of times. The trial for the murder of Grace Mullane began in November 2019. It lasted three weeks. After five hours of deliberation, Jesse was found guilty. He was sentenced to life in prison, no parole for a minimum of 17 years. Now, obviously, you know, you, you saw there uh, the video that Jesse's face was blurred in a lot of the footage. That's because his name, his identity was only released relatively recently at the end of 2020. Till then, he was just, you know, Grace Mullane's murderer, killer. There was a name suppression order sought successfully by the defense in order to guarantee his right to a fair trial. So his name couldn't be published. Uh, in New Zealand, that is. His name was released in December 2020, when it was also revealed he had been convicted of nine other charges, including rape, sexual assault, sexual violence, threatening to kill, among others. These were against two other women. You're so full of You have no reason to convict me. You're full of Grace's father, David, he died a month before Jesse would face further convictions. He died from cancer. Jesse appealed his sentence in 2020. Boom, got denied. The, you know, beautiful spirit of Grace uh, is remembered. Grace's family, they set up a foundation. Love Grace in remembrance and honor of her memory. It helps victims of domestic abuse by asking people to donate handbags filled with items for women in need. And that's the end of that one. You know, during the trial, there's quite a bit of controversy. Uh, as it seemed like Grace was on trial and her sexual life were on trial rather than, um, you know, the guy who fucking killed her. But either way, this uh, sack of shit is behind bars for a bit, especially when others came forward saying he was a monster. So there, a psychologist found he'd probably do it again. So if there's like a key or whatever, you should throw it away. Just idea. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and I appreciate you. Look after yourselves, please, and I will see you in the next one real soon. Till then, take care. Mike out.